Hi there, my name is Chris Bronkhorst and uh, I am a painter. And what I want to show you today is the love for painting. Uh, how to lose your fear of a white canvas. Because that is probably the biggest, biggest hang up most of us have. When you find a white canvas in front of you and uh, you've got to create something. Funny enough, small children don't have that fear. They haven't had enough time to develop a complex about fear for a white canvas. You give them paint and, and a brush and they will in no time cover this entire canvas for you. But as we grow older, we're always concerned about who's going to say what. So I want to do a quick picture today. In about somewhere around half an hour, I'm going to paint this canvas. I'm going to paint a picture for you. I'm going to do it from memory, not even use a reference. And I will uh, show you how you can quickly cover a canvas and develop a love for painting and lose your fear for the white canvas. I'm going to start blocking in, maybe just get this a bit down so that it can hold my uh, canvas so that I don't. And you can see I'm spreading the um, cobalt blue all over the place. For this picture I um, decided that the light on the landscape will come from the left hand side. So the darkest blue is going to be on the right hand side. And uh, I just work it with my brush, just the, the point, the tip of it, I wet it in uh, uh, my painting medium. Painting mediums, you can decide which one you want to use. You can use linseed oil, you can use what the Americans call paint thinner. And yeah, in South Africa, of course, if you talk about paint thinner, it is something that will destroy your canvas. It's something that you use to clean brushes and stuff with. Anyway, and I go lighter as I go to the left because that's where my light source is. It's as strong as the uh, and at the same time now I'm getting my canvas. You can you can hear the the grain of the canvas as I work with a brush across it. Uh, That is because it's slightly textured. Now I can of course go over this and put the next layers of paint across this if I feel like it or if I need it. Work it down. Uh, the blue of the sky is not always the same. It all depends on which country you're in or uh, what time of day it is, what kind of weather it is, that kind of thing. But the cobalt blue is a, a very handy blue and it is quite light because uh, the sky is usually, the, uh, well not, not always, but usually it is the lightest part of your painting. So I'm going to take now and suggest a mountain in the distance. Now mountains, I always say the mountains go blue when they're in the distance. Cobalt blue by itself actually almost gives you that color. We can grey it down a bit. Uh, I'm using a, a very cheap brush here 
Uh, it's actually a varnish or gesso brush, but I don't need to use a more expensive brush, especially for this. And I've added to this blue now, I've added a bit of uh, um, uh, burnt sienna. The burnt sienna is which is the red oxide. And you can see the uh, mountain and I'm working like with the corner of the brush. Not, not really concentrating too much. Just make the mountain range it's your own mountain ranger, so you can actually call it what you like. And you, you can also construct it yourself. One of my friends used to always say you can't manufacture a picture. But this is like sort of from memory and from what I've done before. I, in fact, I think I painted this as a demo twice in the last week so that's why I decided to do this as my first video um, that, and I can of course make it darker later I'm just doing the indication and when you're using the cheaper brush now and again you will get the hair until you've used it a few times and cleaned it and then it will uh, once it's lost a lot of the hair it will uh, it will be fine so I'm, I've got Van Dyke brown here now that is uh, something between I would say burnt sienna, raw umber and uh, burnt umber and it's a nice color and I've got Terra Verde it's an earth green and I'm going to block in a suggestion of uh, trees, a clump of trees it's quite a bit darker and more solid now And I'm going to try and do this picture as quick as I can. The one thing that discourages people from painting is when it becomes a schlep. It's when you, you've got to spend too much time on it. Now, of course, I can refine it and I'll take that up a bit higher. I can refine it later on. I allow some of the direction strokes of the brush show and it will have an effect on the final coat of my paint, of my painting. Taking more of that and adding a slight bit of the other blue that I use, so I've got green, brown and French ultramarine, which is a darker blue. And to make a landscape or any picture really a little bit more interesting, uh, it's always a good idea to add a few diagonals. Now I'm, I'm making the darker side because the light's coming from the left. The shadows, the shadow side of the tree is going to be on my right, and that is very simple. And I can put another little dark. there take more of the uh, blue I 
I never get. I don't think it's a good idea to to ever have something dead center in your canvas. So if it's a mountain or whatever, it's always just above or below, or even better towards the thirds of the canvas. So I'm going to take some of the Van Dyke Brown, mix it with a bit of uh, um, French Ultramarine so, and I'm going to put the suggestion of a river bank here composing it and imagining and recalling even from memory some suggestions. Another here, yeah, remove that. Okay, put some of this burnt in there. It's a beautiful orange earth brown and it just gives life to the painting instead of all being greens, browns and greys. We can even use some of the burnt sienna to also give me a suggestion of greys, uh, of, of color and light. So yeah, and now because this is what, supposed to be water, I work with a brush vertical. Gives you the idea of reflection. And even though this is now a river, it's moving water. So you will still get the idea of a reflection. And that's why I have vertical marks. So I'm just going to rinse my brush now and get some of the color off it. Otherwise I may get a little bit too much like mud. I've got a a big black cloth here and as you can see I'm making quite sure that my brush is not too wet because it'll, the paint will slide. I'm still using the same brush because it's just easier. Sometimes a person get you get irritated by having too many brushes and having to chop and change. You can paint the most of this picture with one brush. And then I'm just going to repeat the the sky. I add some of this suggestion of water which is not blue. The, the suggestion that the water is blue is because it reflects the sky. The water works like a mirror. And I go a little bit lighter. I've got two whites here. One is a warm white, one is a titanium white. Now these whites are not readily, readily available all over the world. This was the creation, manufacturing of a friend of mine who is also a good artist and his name's Joe. So thanks Joe for giving me this 
to work with. I am trying to cover this white canvas as quickly as I can. The quicker you do it, and you can see I've got this black cloth here that can soak up and I can even slap it on the easel to make sure that there's not too much wet left there and then I'm going, I've got cadmium yellow here this is cadmium yellow and I just put it like sort of across the lights coming from the right hand side and this is like sort of the green where the, the light is actually catching it. These darker spots I imagine is uh, they are the shadow parts of the grass and then just there on the horizon line I'm going to take a little bit of this Van Dyke Brown mix it with the yellow which is going to give me a suggestion of green and I just slightly more define the horizon light line there make trying to make sure that that is not dead center uh, one of the portions either the landscape or the sky has got to be uh, a bit bigger than the other one so and now to give it more color I am going to take uh, another brown which I got here and that is raw umber now this gives me a nice warm green look at this nice warm green and I can make it give it more sunlight here and there the sun is going to catch stronger on the tree and it is of course this because it's coming from the left the sun this is going to the light side of the trees the foliage is going to be on the left <coughs> so I have now got my canvas covered this paint all over it and then I can start suggesting the rocks and mud banks here on the by the river bank Just actually seen better days, so but it's okay. I can still manage. I want to use a bit of blue, pink, sienna, and green to make here and there a darker spot which would suggest denser foliage now I'm going to take some cobalt blue and French ultramarine and just give me a, a darker indication here to give me a sharper contrast and the chance 
to make a stronger counter change on between the dark areas and the sunlight. I go over the cad yellow that I put here and that makes it a little bit more natural. Okay, now I'm going to take a smaller brush. These are just hog brushes. This also is natural bristle. Uh, a person, of course, you get, uh, 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 you can buy nylon, you can buy sable and that kind of thing. Bristle to me still works the nicest. And if I want to put marks on it, this is the basis of my painting and it looks like a landscape and the suggestion of everything is there. I just got to strengthen it and to do that I'm okay, going to take some of that uh, uh, cobalt blue and I just put a tad of cad orange, cadmium orange to it which This is the, the right hand side of the mountain there is where, where the shadows will be. So that now just appears a little bit more solid and there's a variation in the color. Get it to look a bit more 3D. Take a little bit of blue, the cobalt blue and white, and put it with that orange and make it look more solid. In other words, the, the paint is now less translucent, although. The mountain still has the overall effect of being slightly translucent because it's in a distance. And I am going to, to balance this. A classic composition is usually the U, this is more L shaped. So I want to put something on the left to um, like sort of balance it out and make it look slightly more interesting so I'm just going to add that and then I'm going to start to define and put a little bit more detail on this so that it will be more interesting It's not necessary. I can take this cadmium yellow and uh, cadmium orange, mix it a bit. But uh, if you know, I want to save my time, myself some mixing time, I will take a cadmium yellow deep. These, of course, are the more expensive pigments, and I'm going to add a few poplars there because that. always looks nice and interesting. I can now paint. You can see that I'm holding my brush literally in between my thumb and two fingers and it's almost parallel to the canvas which gives me okay there's a bit more green just a touch of it because sometimes the green is more than one poplar there but it must be really more towards yellow and even orange I can put some of the burnt sienna and raw 
I'm bad. And also do vertical strokes. And then just go and soften that brightness of the cadmium yellow deep. Blend it a little bit here and there, leaving some brush marks so that it will be interesting. And as it gets lower, I can actually add a little bit of blue and make it just like suggestion of a bush there. Very soft. It is now almost balanced. Now I can, sometimes I dip my brush in the cleaning white spirit tips, whichever thing you like to use and I take the warm white which is actually a bit sharper than Naples yellow. Um, this is Joe's color that he made so it is actually very nice. Uh, a very unique color and then yeah I got of course another tree I'm playing it off against the dark here. Now I'm going to take maybe a brush, one of the smaller, and Take this um, bit of cat yellow, the warm white, and just add a little touch of green, just to break it. And then I'm going to now put a stronger streak of sunlight across my landscape here. And it immediately gives it a, makes a big difference. This, I will imagine, is sloping down. So I'm still holding my brush fairly soft. And here I just fade it into the dark. Take more light, even touch of cadmium orange now. I wasn't going to use the cadmium orange really, but I just put it there and then give it that extra suggestion of color there. Another streak of sunlight falling on the bank here. And then I can take the big brush again. I didn't clean it, but it's a good idea once I've put white or lightened some of the paint with paint with uh, white that I at least wipe it off with, with a cloth. And then take the the colors that I use to get my darks, my blacks, even grays, Pinciana and French Ultramarine gives you a very dark color, but it's still more alive than a black. Of course I can use a black, a lot of people use that. Just give it the idea that the river is coming around the bend there. Vertical for reflection. Just literally using the 
point of the brush to do uh, the suggestion of the river bank. Okay, now I'm taking a fan brush and I'm just doing it in the uh, dipping it, I'm loading it with this warm white which is, suppose if you can't get it, you can mix it uh, with a little bit of yellow and uh, titanium white and the fan brush, most people use it just to to blend things, I'm going to use it to give me an indication of trees, the trunks of the tree, just put a slight suggestion here, of a few branches and it's already if I put too much detail here it's not going to look nice so I just put the suggestion there then I can decide if I want to do a bit of burnt sienna mixed with that white which gives me a bit of a thicker trunk and just leave it like that. The other thing, when I do water, when a person does water, if the river is flying into the picture, the, the ripples will be this way. The difference between convex and concave is the difference between a river running away from me or running out of the picture. If I do it like this, it means the water will be coming this way because the the, the edges of the banks that gives it the direction it slows the water down just a little bit of blue with the white and The river flows that way. Okay, now I'm going to put just, if I didn't want to use that fan brush, I could take a, a sharp round brush and actually hang it like that and just make it more interesting hanging the brush and hardly holding it and just do it uh, a little bit more natural okay so I'm going to just put a touch of cadmium yellow small touch of green bit of warm white and a highlight or two on the, the grass here on the trees and then I can start mixing uh, thicker paint if I want I'll just show you one spot um, take some titanium white with a cobalt blue mix it so now I do the thicker paint just to make it more 
permanent and we see through more the finish of the uh, brush and the, the surface of the canvas looks more finished take a little bit of warm white mix it with titanium white and make the blue there and I've got a lost cloud or something there can just take a, maybe a little bit of cadmium orange and mix it with burnt sienna just for on the river bank there yeah I've got color coming through there just fade it in it's just for um, little bit more interesting. I can put cattle on here, I can put anything on here and just in the center here I can do the water stronger sunlight there. If I need to take my finger soften some of that just with a finger like that and I've got the basic picture done. Okay now I have allowed this to dry a bit. The the whole the entire surface of the canvas and now I've still got some quite a bit of paint on my palette and it's, it's not that I don't want to waste it's just that I'm going to repeat some colors all over the place here and put a couple of highlights it won't take me long because from here it's so very easy to overwork the picture and then it will really uh, I won't be happy with it and nobody else will either so I'm going to just um, get some little bit more dark in the distance here and this is very thin paint it's like almost like a glaze I still use a variety of brush strokes and just let the brush do the work and give me interesting shapes which will enhance the picture slightly. I don't want to do too much. strengthen the some places okay now I will put some sunshine on the or sunlight on the trees there and mix myself with the raw amber got a bit of French ultramarine and Get yellow deep and that gives me a warmer color <coughs> repeated in the front of the painting in the foreground there is a bit of um, you see I don't mix it all together so there is a bit of a French ultramarine came through strong then I'm going to do it here by the river just a slight bit of detail which will enhance the picture without spoiling the overall I'm working with a soft brush here Give it a hint of a reflection there and there. I think 
I'm happy with that. And then I'm going to just wipe my brush off. Strengthen the color a little bit in the water so that uh, I've got cobalt blue and titanium white. Just strengthen it here yeah, slightly. One or two marks of color. It will also enhance the feeding of water. Working with a soft brush and uh, very light brush marks. And uh, then I'm going to, I'll take some of this warm white, which is <coughs> actually a titanium white with a little bit of yellow, make it a bit creamy. And I still got some blue on my brush, but I didn't clean it now. I didn't think it was necessary. And then I will suggest the movement of the water here with highlights even across here, I can do it, which will give me a better feeling of moving water and it's moving into the picture so it is that direction. Just look at the angle of the paint in diagonal and it suggests to me that the water is running into the picture and not towards me. Maybe strengthen the sunlight there on the on the meadow using cad yellow and the mixture of cad yellow deep and raw umber and just gently and this is called scumbling the the brush is hardly touching the canvas it's only the paint really that the brush is loaded with that's giving me marks and it's almost flat the brush is almost flat on the uh, canvas and I think you can see that I'm improving this. Now the danger of course is from here. It's so easy to overwork this picture. So I'm going to take a bit of lighter green to make with the raw umber and cad yellow deep touch of white and very lightly just on some places not too many add a bit of detail I'm allowing the brush to do the work here for me I'm not ready putting any pressure on it. Okay, and now when I look at it, I think I can just...
Teiksim, rū ambe. Tad šo forinč. Because the trees must not, trunks must, and, and branches must not be too light. Otherwise it will, it won't look natural. It's a little bit dark, I think. And then just let the, the brush do some work for me. This, these marks I can also make with a rigger or with a fan brush. You can draw very thin lines. This uh, sable flat is giving me nice sharp suggestions of trees and some of them a little bit faded away because they're further away. Don't want to, okay, and I don't want to overdo it. Let's repeat a bit of that three color there, the, the trunks color, which is like almost a salmon, very light salmon. There's sunlight on a rock here. And I think I'm done. Um, if I put too much on here, the picture may look overworked. And I think I've got a nice impression here of a very peaceful landscape. Uh, so that's it. I'm not going to do anything more apart from signing this picture. If you like this video, please go down below, like and subscribe so that I can give you more videos and uh, we will progress and make more complete and uh, intricate paintings.